hello guys uh, welcome to another video we're continuing with our paper two so i feel like i am not happy with my work on this question that gave us a bit of a hassle so i felt let us try another method so that we can see if it gives us the same answer then we can accept it maybe we might just see so remember we spoke about that we can do the perpendicular distance between these parallel lines but of course considering them extended so let's have a look and see what we can do about that okay before we just continue with our trigonometry sometimes we see when you are learning you really want to uh, to learn as much as you can so obviously with everything considered so we already worked out here c was minus six and minus 10 okay and we know here that we found out that this is zero and minus seven okay so with everything considered we just keep it that simple of course um, we have our lovely quadrilateral here that we are trying to do the area of i just want to see if what we abandoned was going to save us already we know this side is definitely not parallel to that side so we know that we have another trapezium right there okay so now we decided we're going to look at these parallel lines differently now remember when something is slanted like this you won't always have so consider this part i mean this side ce as a in fact it's not even to be considered but it is a continuation of de so this is still parallel to that so but now because we're focusing on our quadrilateral so we're going to make sure that we come from that vertex okay we want to make sure we come from that vertex because this would define our perpendicular line okay exactly nicely so we know that this should be perpendicular to ce so that we can say this is the perpendicular distance between the parallel lines which is what we are interested in because we are saying fine the perpendicular distance between these parallel lines will essentially be what we need as the height of this quadrilateral spare that it is slanted okay and now we want to know what are the coordinates there so we can say this is x and y we really don't know them at this point so it is just x and y so don't panic I'm going to work it out so now we have to find out what are these we already discovered that the equation of ce was y equals what a half of x minus seven again like i said we are just doing this question one more time let's see if indeed there was a way of going shorter about it or it was just this nightmare it appeared to be so just wanted to clean up my diagram a little bit so that we can see where we're going so we already tested this is definitely i mean that ae is not perpendicular to ce you can calculate the gradients they don't give a negative one when you multiply so it's out so you can't try that as well so what do we do now okay so what we want to do is to find these coordinates okay that is the main thing because once we find these coordinates we can then work out what is that so let's call this point p okay let's call this point p all right so now we know we can find op and once we find op we will find cd and ba because our formula that we want to work with is that we know we are looking to do area of a b c d to be equal to half the sum of the parallel pairs which is going to be b a bachelor of arts 
plus CD, which is the things you listen music. You listen to music when they play, right? Multiplied by let's say BP, but not the BP garage, okay? But I think it's quite interesting. So BP, which is the BP garage, you know, you want to go and pour your gas in there. So this is what we want to actually use. Of course, it doesn't mean what we did was wrong, but it was a bit lengthy and long. So let's see if this method that we chose to abandon could have taken us much closer without really suffering the way that we had. All right, so now that we know, we've mapped out what we can do with this one. So let's first deal with this one. Now, you need to realize something that P is collinear with C, D, I mean with C, D, and E because it's right along that line. So obviously, if you want to express the Y coordinate of this point, it is exactly that equation, isn't it? So that is the first step. So we know we're going to answer this question again, 3.3.2. We're going to say let uh, let um, what let BP perpendicular to CE okay uh, okay let's just say uh, what can I say let me just phrase it properly. We can say let the perpendicular, okay, let's just use the sign symbol. Let the perpendicular distance between the parallel sides of a uh, a, B, C, D, uh, cut C, E at point P. Okay, you're just setting up. I mean, you don't really have to think too hard, but I'm just trying to be comprehensive so that you can follow. So we're going to say let the perpendicular distance between the parallel sides of A, B, C, D cut C, E at P because we want to use that P as our point of reference. Okay, such that P is X is to Y. Okay, now we sorted. We've set up our mood just right, just right, and you can see you will indicate it on your sketch, okay? They will provide you this one. So now this implies that this implies that y equals a half of x minus 7. This y. That is the y we are talking about. Because remember, this y lies on this line. So if we define this y, we will substitute y where y is. So it remains y. So maybe you could have chosen another denotion than say a and b. But I think it's easier this way. And then, of course, this is what we have, okay? So we're going to use this as our equation one. So you definitely need simultaneous equations here. What else do we know? We know that, fine, this being perpendicular to this side, or even that side, I mean, whichever you choose, you can use that side or this side is up to you because they have the same gradient. So whether you use that side because it will still be perpendicular even there. So not a big deal. But the key is you need this P. Without it, it becomes a bit difficult to figure out what to do. So, now what are we going to do here? We're going to say, but, like my essay type way of answering, but it's not necessary, so don't try to do it and commit suicide there. But what do we know? I know that find CD or well, let's just say CE. I know that CE is perpendicular. Ugh, what am I doing? Let's not 
do this, let's not do this, but I know that M, M what? M BP, the gradient of BP, which is that perpendicular height, multiplied by the gradient of CE. I went a man, soon pale. H C E like that a bonag a sabonagal manch a retor okay it must be minus one okay again these are perpendicular lines okay they are perpendicular lines their gradient their gradients multiply to minus one this implies that the gradient of BP multiplied by we already know that the gradient of CE was a half from what we worked out from BA because these are parallel lines so they are the same so don't cause yourself unnecessary problems so in any case they just need to cross multiply that two to that side and that's it this tells us that now the gradient of BP equals what minus 2 because it will be minus 2 when we divide by a half there what does this imply it also implies that now we can express this as the y coordinate at p minus the y coordinate at b right divide by the x coordinate at what p minus the x coordinate at b equals minus 2 okay now what do we do here this is 2 over 1 as well so we still cross multiply not a big deal so we get y minus a half equals uh, minus 2x okay so what do we need to do now well, we can uh, decide to transpose this one and say that means y equals minus 2x plus a half. So that essentially gives us the equation of this line. So this is definitely the equation of that line. The gradient is negative, definitely. And guess what? The y-intercept is a half, and that is what it is. So we already know what we didn't know initially. In fact, I should not have bothered myself doing all these calculations because I should have seen that. Once I have the gradient and I have the y-intercept, I can use that. I don't know why I didn't see it. Anyway, sometimes you don't see things that are staring at you. So we can make that equation too. But guess what? This speaks about the same y. The same y. So what do we know? We can say 1 equals 2, such that we have minus 2x plus a half equals that, which is um, a half x minus 7. And what do we do? This implies we can just bring the numbers around all we want, so it's fine. We can take the half to that side. So minus 2 minus a half. Um, what is that? So minus 2 minus 0, 0,5 is minus 11 over 5x equals, we transpose this one to this side, 7, okay, minus 7 plus, okay, minus 7 minus 0, 0,5, this is minus 36 over 5, okay? So let me check again. What did I say here? 7 plus 0, 0,5 so this is 15 over 2 so I did something stupid there something was not right okay now this is 15 over 2 so therefore our x is a positive number so what happens here you flip that you multiply it here so 5 to 15 three times um, I man, what is this, Kant? Is there something wrong here? Ah, yeah, yeah. 10 is on so well, let's see. I said minus 2 minus 0, 0,5. Ish, 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 ish. Yeah, boy, And that's the end of the 
minus 5 over 2 oh sorry guys for this nonsense so this is minus 5 over 2 this is minus 15 over 2 so when you flip this what happens is 5 3 times there and then um, 2 once so you get 3 as a result okay so therefore our y will also be equal to now we can substitute to any of these two equations so it's going to be half into 3 minus 7 which is what so this is 3 over 2 right minus 7 so I get minus 11 over 2 which is roughly minus 5 over 5 okay so therefore I know that my point P is like this is 3 is 2 minus 11 over 2 does it make any logical sense well if this is 7 this is definitely above this point so it makes a bit of sense that the y coordinate would be minus 5 comma 5 and does it make sense for it to be 3 yes because already that point is right after this one so it's 5 so it makes a bit of a an acceptable distance so now that we have P we can now determine our BP okay so this implies that BP equals the square root of uh, x at P minus x at B or squared plus y at p minus y at b all squared great let's substitute nice and easy there so this is 3 minus 0 squared plus uh, minus 11 over 2 minus a half squared what do we get we just put it in the calculator this time we don't want to be doing multiple steps but be vigilant in case you're making a mistake don't make mistakes here there's a lot of room for errors here because there's just too many things to consider and these kinds of questions will cause you to panic trust me so I get 3 root 5 units so don't round off anything when it gets nicely like that you just do that can say also what do we want because we're working in this quadrilateral so we also want CD right is going to be that situation there X at D minus X at C all squared plus Y at D minus Y at C all squared substitute x at d is 0 minus y at c it's minus 6 so it's going to be plus 6 squared plus uh, y at d is minus 7 minus minus 10 there it's going to be plus 10 all squared just put it in the calculator as well and not do too many steps here so basically we have 6 squared plus minus 7 plus 10 that is just 3 squared 3 squared is 3 root 5 I win 10 at the corner the column 10 that will into as far as 3 root 5 I win that means OPP will link on a no CD okay they're not even connected anyway so it's possible units okay not a problem so one more length to calculate uh, let's do it over here let's do it over here so we want OBA BA is going to be equal to the square root of uh, X at A minus X at B all squared plus Y at A minus Y at B so be consistent otherwise the choice is up to you really but be consistent if you started with a continue with a being the first one so this is 5 minus 0 all squared plus here we have 3 minus a half all squared let's see what do we have over there 
just going to try and substitute ah let's not let's just start over nice and easy so we have 5 here squared plus 3 minus a half and then that squared so we get our answer I get 5 root 5 over 2 okay now we have all the lengths that we want but do you see the page is full so there's no escape here I, I tell you there was no escape here okay so we can say therefore the area of a b c d is going to be equal to half the sum of the two parallel sides which is going to be b a plus c d okay multiplied by the perpendicular height between the two which is b p okay so we can just go on and substitute now what did we find b a to b is 5 root 5 over 2 Oh, plus, yeah, ne? Ah, son. Yang Five root five over two plus CD. What did we find? Three root five. Multiplied by OP. Did we calculate OP? Goodness, I did not. Oh, no, no, BP, not OP, man. BP, we did. It was 3 root 5, so... Almost panicking there. I don't know why I'm wasting so much time. So just put that thing in the calculator. So we have a half here. Into... Uh, 5 root 5 over 2. Plus um, 3 root 5. into 3 root 5 okay so let's see what we get okay I get that which is 4 1 comma 2 5 you can say square units so no man there was no escape you can tell here it's pretty much similar but maybe the other one is a bit longer than this one you see we got the same answer though we got 41,25 and we're getting 41,25 so that means there's no way we are wrong but uh, yeah it's a bit of a situation yeah it's a bit of a situation in any case um, what we did helped us even more than maybe this one would so whatever you want to say this four marks was truly not supposed to be four marks this is about seven marks or so either way that is the other way you could have looked at that question so we are not doing analytical geometry I just felt a bit uneasy with the long 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 methods and in fact it turned out to be just as long anyway so let us get to our trigonometry and start flying okay because we need to move we cannot afford to stall here we need to move like we really need to move uh, trigonometry like i said it is almost like uh, doing algebra again but this is algebra in a geometric sense, right? Because trigonometry means triangular measurement. Mainly right angled triangles, but with the introduction of the triangle rule, sine rule, cosine rule, area rule, we can now even deal with triangles that are not necessarily right angled. Anyway, let's not talk too much now. Let's answer these questions. Question five says, in the diagram below P, Okay, they're giving the coordinates of P in the Cartesian plane. We can see that this is in the second quadrant. So quadrants matter a lot in trigonometry. Is a point in the Cartesian plane. R is a point on the positive x-axis. Okay, fine. It's just a reference point. Such that P O R. Okay, they wanted to be able to show us that 
this is the angle they're talking about so it's theta okay so once you see that I mean once you get a terminal arm diagram you know you're dealing with the right angled triangle here so your Pythagoras will be very helpful so immediately just show that you have 90 degrees there okay and with those 90 degrees you know that the coordinates is x and y so y is 4x is minus 7 so you need to work out the hypotenuse side the hypotenuse side is referred to as r squared equals what x squared plus y squared the reason is Pythagoras so always work it out immediately don't delay 4 squared plus minus 7 squared which is going to be what uh, let's say 4 squared uh, plus uh, minus 7 squared is 65 therefore our r is going to be the square root of 65 right so square root of our answer is 65 so there's no better way to put it so there's no simplest said than that okay so once you do that you will always put yourself in a position to score some marks so let's run through this one it's usually the easiest so don't make a meal of this one so question 5 here 5.1 5.1.1 so it says calculate the length of OP which is what we did so now we are supposed to do it again OP equals uh, the square root I'm just gonna do it I mean in a very simple way is equal to the square root of uh, x squared plus y squared okay what is the story there it's Pythagoras so how you phrase this is not really important like I said you could do that here not a problem or you can just say C diagram OP equals this the reason C diagram if you worked on it so someone can see it so we can just do this we know this is 4 Ah, no, 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 minus 7. Hmm. Yan port like in Google land. Uh, 4 squared. This equals the square root of 65 units. A dozen port the land, you know, and then the long 7 zom tag. Then the kaleg. Kalaga. Okay, now we have our answer there let's just keep moving we don't want to waste time here these are not very fancy questions so 5.1.2 is divided into a they're saying 10 theta so fine 10 theta is opposite of adjacent so it's easy so it's going to be minus 4 over 7 and that's the answer so don't waste your time here you don't have to write the definitions that it is going to be y over x and things like that just put the thing there it's one mark look at the marks as well sometimes you will get the guide that what matters here is the answer b they are saying now cos theta minus 180 degrees so it's a bit more sorry so this is cos of theta minus 180 degrees all right so the best way to deal with this situation is to always factor out a negative here so this is the same as cos of put in some square brackets and factor out a negative here then what happens when you do that is that 180 becomes positive inside the smaller bracket so it becomes 180 degrees then the theta becomes negative so you want it to look like the normal situation of your reduction formula otherwise there are some people who can look at it and be like okay I know where I'm at here but for me 
it's just technical uh, some people know this is the second quadrant without even you know factoring some things out but for me i always choose the longest route because i'm always trying to not make mistakes because shortcuts trust me they'll get you in trouble but a bit of a longish cut will always ensure your safety and success but again you choose what works for you so all I know is now cos of a negative angle first of all you always assume this to be just a single angle theta okay so cos of a negative in general is just positive because this means we're in the fourth quadrant hypothetically so this is the same as cos of 180 degrees minus theta okay now we can do a proper reduction formula now. This is second quadrant and cos is negative. So this is minus cos theta. Okay. So understand your cast diagram. So the last thing you want to do now is to look here. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is now minus into minus 7 over the square root of 65. Okay which is going to be 7 over root 65. Sometimes leave it here, but we were taught to rationalize the denominator, okay? Whenever you do that, you multiply by what would be there. So you can either leave your answer as 7 root 65 over 65, or you just leave it like that. But to rationalize the denominator was usually a standard thing to do if you don't do it you would be punished for that again you can see there's a lot of things to consider here but I would imagine the best thing is to know that you're getting here and you're getting there the rest is just mathematical gymnasia that you need to know okay 5.2 let's not waste time here so it says determine the general solution of cos sine cos okay sine x cos x plus sine x minus 3 cos squared x plus 3 cos x whoa what a situation i don't believe that seven marks okay let us see if we can do it here so this is sine x times cos x plus sine x equals 3 cos squared x plus 3 cos x okay not a problem so we need to do the general solution so this is fine it's not a big deal so this implies this is like solving quadratic equations isn't it that's what it looks like but we, we almost thought for a second this is sine cos sine cos so this would be like a sine uh, compound angle but now it doesn't really look so much of a compound angle does it no not at all so what we need to do here we need to be smart about our things. We can actually take a highest common factor on the left hand side, which is sine x. Into, we get cos x plus 1. Okay? That's what we would get here. Here we get the highest common factor here. It is, three, it is just 3 cos x. Into cos x plus 1. Right? right so you can already see here that uh, if you divide by cos x plus one sometimes you need to really have a sharp eye I promise you these things can be a bit of a situation believe me cos x plus one so you don't want to rush into identities before you like I said, if you apply this method I showed in most of my videos on trigonometry, I call it BODMAS or BOMDAS. Now here you're dealing with brackets, ordinals, whatever, but we used to say brackets off. That means if there were any reduction formulae and stuff like that, like basics of trigonometry, you deal with them first, okay? 
and then you follow with multiplication and division this is when you have factors like you would in this situation you just cancel them out as soon as you can all right addition and subtraction would we'll talk about like terms are there any like terms you want to deal with if you can't remember this is your step one your step two, if you can't do these things like reduction formulae, you cannot take out brackets, you cannot do factors and cancel them out, you cannot see any like terms and sort them out. What you do, you come here and try to factorize the thing. So you can already see here, there weren't so many like terms, right? But they looked similar in a way. So we ended up factorizing and factorization is either you take the HCF which is the highest common factor or you do uh, you factorize a trinomial use brackets I don't know what to say uh, what else is the dots okay let's just say dots difference of two squares highest common factor and or brackets I don't know what to say here but this when you're doing a trinomial and if this doesn't work, you look at step three where you use identities, all of them, okay? Double angles, compound angles. But do not be the guy who starts here and work your way back. You will always bend because look, if you started doing identities here, you're just going to create yourself a bad, bad, bad situation. But can you see it just simplifies nicely when you have this in mind. So always, start with this look at this expression study it are there any similarities if so what can i do about that well i can't do anything there are no like terms there are no factors to do anything about um if you like you could even divide by cos but if you start dividing by cos you end up with a 10 theta now it complicates your life in a way so you don't want to introduce another uh, another um trig ratio unless really that is your final answer at the end so you don't want to start doing it early if ah, let's not overly explain this but this is how i do it so here i'm done so what am i left with i'm left with sine x equals 3 cos x see how simple this is it looked as if we're going to bend and goodness we did not bend <laughs> so we can divide by cos x. I choose cos x because I just want my 10 theta to come out nicely. So this tells me that I have 10 theta because remember now, when I divide by cos here, what do I end up with? Identity, step three. Sine of our cos of the same angle is 10. Oh God, why is theta coming here now? Don't be a party pooper equals 3 and we know 10 can be defined by any value it's not like sine and cos so what do we see here this is positive so 10 is positive in the first quadrant and third quadrant but for 10 theta general solution is very easy this tells me that theta equals I mean x equals uh, arc 10 3 plus k times 180 degrees where k is an element of integers because the period of 10 is 180 so therefore my x is going to be now let's find that angle so for 10 theta just leave it like this it's fine you don't need to do plus or minus and do all those other things you will just get all the solutions if you do this so that's the nice thing about the 10 so i never complicate it but you can if you want do reference angle and all that so what I have here to two decimal places is seven one comma five seven so this is seven to one comma five seven degrees plus k times 180 degrees where k is an element of integers that is it for 10 you don't have to do other things because for example if you make k1 already you're in the second quadrant so I mean in the third quadrant so you have your solution and if you make k0 you have your first quadrant 
the rest is really not necessary so k here would be either 0 or 1 and that way it captures all the solutions so don't complicate your life here and start answering a lot of things and say this is going to be 7 to 1 or it's going to be but this already captures that so this is how simple this thing can be but you can see there's a lot of things you had to do here first of all taking the common factors out is a mark and then cancelling those ones is another mark okay again dividing by course here is a mark and using identities getting that is a mark uh, doing this is a mark so how many marks do we have here one two three four five so i would give you two marks for that seven marks but i don't know man there may be more so but the seven marks was really not that difficult if you have an approach so there's a three-step approach to deal with trig equations or any trig expressions like identities you know trick equations and, and stuff like that always think about this and don't start at the bottom unless it is obvious that this is what you need again it comes with practice so if you practice this the most then you will be able to handle them without any suffering all right guys um let's move we don't have time to waste yeah so they became a bit light on you guys when it came to trigonometry for now <laughs> for now let's not say too much because we don't know where we're going all right so 5.3 we are doing a little bit better this time 5.3 says given the identity prove the given identity uh to 5.3.1 so always left hand side Okay, let's just write what is given I always like to do that because sometimes I don't want to talk about what people don't see cos 3x equals 1 plus cos 3x over sine 3x okay not a problem so the left hand side is sine 3x over 1 minus cos 3x all right, so what are we going to do about this? Uh, here's the issue now. These kinds of questions, you may have to work both sides first and narrow them down to the same thing. But if you follow my Bodmas uh, approach, let's just try and show it again here because I think it's quite important. So let's just say these three steps. This is just this three steps approach. One, we want to use board mass or bomb dust, okay? Are there any brackets? No. Are there any reduction formula? No. Are there any factors that we can cancel out here, which is multiplication or division? Not really. Are there any like terms? No. So we can't use step one. Step two, can we factorize something? Factorization is either HCF or trinomials or you do dots, okay? No, we can't. Then step three, do we want identities? Well, identities not directly here because we'll have to split this first before we can use identities. So you can see here we look like we are lost because none of our three things can work. So what is the best thing to do? Now always look at the complicated side of the two whether the numerator or the denominator there's something that is called multiplying by conjugate to create what we call dots difference of two squares so we want to actually end up factorizing this side because we can see sine 3x is there so we don't really have to change this anyway but let's try to change this and see what effect it gives us so when we create dots here we multiply by the conjugate of this okay which is in essence is just multiplying by one but we're going to say one plus cos 3x over one plus cos 
3x. Again, this is something you need to know. So this is the same as multiplying by 1, but such that that which you multiply by is the conjugate of whichever you want to change because, I mean, you can tell if you want to make this to look like that, obviously there has to be a plus here instead of a negative. So we need a conjugate to multiply with, but in theory this is 1 because this divided by that is just that. But now we're going to go ahead and multiply. So when we multiply there, we get sine 3x, because this is by 1. Remember, numerators multiply here. There's no <coughs> factors to cancel out. So that is fine. Plus sine 3x cos 3x. Okay, that's what we get at the top. Over, we do this one. Now, you will notice that this one is the difference of two squares. Right? That's what it is, because here, let's just leave it as that. Cos 3x into 1 plus cos 3x. Okay. Now, we ended up with what would be difference of two squares. <coughs> so, let's see. What do we do here? Again, we look and say, do we have any brackets to deal with? Yes, they are there, but do we really want to manipulate those brackets? No, not for now. Let's just leave them for now and not try to be silly or do anything about those brackets. Uh, maybe we should. Maybe we should because if we don't, it's going to take us back to where we, we, we came from. So I was thinking already to factorize here, but no, to factorize is going to take us back to that. So we can't factorize. We have to continue. So let's see what is going to have to happen here. Mm. Let's see. Let us see what we're going to have to do here. Okay, what we have is a little bit fun. So let's just deal with this bracket in terms of dots. So we have sine 3x plus, oops, sine 3x times cos 3x. So at times you just don't know where you're going. But in terms of this, we know that 1 multiplied by that is going to just be 1 because 1's are positive. So this is 1 minus cos squared 3x, isn't it? So I'm just taking the shortcut. You guys need to expand that bracket and then you will end up with this because minus cos 3x plus cos 3x will just disappear. So you only have this multiplied by that. So a negative times a positive is a negative. Cos 3x times cos 3x is that one. All right, so what do we know about this one? We know that, well, we leave the numerator as it is for now. So we have sine 3x plus sine 3x times cos 3x, okay? All over. But now what is that? Think of this square identity. Now this one is a bit off because it doesn't really follow your rules so much, isn't it? So let's see. When we think of the square identities here, but in terms of theta being 3x, so you know here that you would have something like sine squared 3x plus cos squared 3x. Don't always limit yourself to the single form of the angle, but any combination that is equal, when you have that, it gives you 1. So you can al almost tell that when you have cos transposed, it solves sine squared 3x. So this would be sine squared 3x here, okay? From this identities, which is what we would be using there. Okay, now we can tell, ah, doch, we can now factor out our sine eventually. So what do we have here? We have sine 3x becomes 1 plus what remains here is cos 3x all over sine squared 3x. Now there's a relevance here. So this one 
we'll take just the square here that is now step one because we are factoring things out in fact we used step two to factorize sorry that I forgot to keep track of what we are doing so all we have is 1 plus cos 3x over sine 3x isn't it what we have there it is which is equal to the right hand side identity proven so that was a bit of work unfortunately but look how much they are giving you just three marks crazy people crazy people but maybe I went about it the long way I don't know doesn't really matter maybe what I needed to do was never to expand this maybe I should have just left this one alone as this multiplied by that and then focused on my denominator because in any case that is the key so maybe I just complicated my life here I should not have okay maybe that's why you have three marks anyway that's okay so multiplying by that conjugate is mark worthy to get to this guy is mark worthy and of course um, I think this final one I mean the rest is obvious so cool we take the three marks and we move on 5.3.2 um, what do we have here? It says now, determine the values of x in the interval 0 and 60 for which the identity will be undefined. Okay, so now here's the issue. You have to think about two things here. You have to think about, uh, now for this identity to be undefined, I think there's two scenarios, but I don't know why. Three marks doesn't really make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me, but in any case, for this identity not to be valid, it's either you'll have this as zero or that as zero. So let's work it out. So it would mean that you would have 1 minus cos 3x equals 0 or sine 3x equals 0, right? Right, because either the left hand side or the right hand side, the denominators, once they are 0, then the whole thing is undefined. So again, you see question 1 comes back talking about real numbers so you want a real number situation so for it to be real the denominators cannot be one now what does this imply it implies that cos 3x equals 1 right because just transpose it to that side so that means if this is 1 then we have a problem because this would become 0 and that one remains 0 or sine 3x equals 0. So this implies now that 3x equals, remember here, you're going to have to think of general solutions. I always solve this by using general solutions, or you can use your reference angle. So when I deal with a cos, I deal with a plus and minus of a situation. So arc cos. 1. All right. Right. Okay, so plus k times 360 degrees because the period of course is 360. Or I deal with the sine here. So now I can have sine is can sine be 0? Yes, it can be, but at 0. So I don't know. Let's just check if it is even valid. <clears throat> because I don't think sine of an angle can be zero. It's impossible. Maybe sine of zero. Okay. Arc sine <laughs> zero. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, it's not. Okay. 
so it's fine it can be zero um, so we can just say here uh, or uh, 3x equals for this one is going to be ish and man is going to be remember this is an acute angle so you don't want to worry too much about the second quadrant maybe I'm doing too much here but it's fine arc sine uh, let's just say arc sine of 0 plus k times 360 degrees where k is an element of integers Maybe I'm just prolonging this because my issue here is I already know the interval they gave me is an acute angle, so it's in the first quadrant, so I should not even bother thinking about other quadrants. So maybe I should not do the general solutions. Maybe let's just cut this part out. It's not necessary, but sometimes it's protecting you. It's protecting you, so... I'm just thinking you can go this route but I'm thinking on the fly now given the interval I don't need to do this general solution I just focus on the first quadrant so I know here that 3x is gonna be arc cos of 1 in the first quadrant or 3x is gonna be arc sine of zero in the first quadrant because these are now in the first quadrant only this also implies that 3x equals now let's see arc cos 1 is zero wow zero degrees that's all because that is the same thing it's zero maybe let's just say therefore 3x is zero degrees therefore our x is zero degrees not a problem so that is sorted maybe they knew that ugh, you don't need the general solutions because I mean think about it you would still have zero you would still have zero but now the problem would be when do you draw the line so maybe start to problem I mean to suffer yeah that was a bit of a nice and silly question at the same time but I think the interval is key to deciding what you need to do so I think here selecting those two is key all right and then maybe deciding that that is the value of X so it's zero so that is three marks so you walk away with some 18 marks here I think that opening 18 marks was not too bad maybe Maybe if there's anything that could shake your confidence would be that one. If you start off wrong, then you get lost. And you probably never find yourself. Okay, let's keep moving. When we are cruising, let's not stall. When we are struggling, then we can take our time to make sure we gather our thoughts. All right, all right, all right, all right. So you know you're going to always get a question on reduction formulae or formulae. So it says now, question six. Well, we're moving to Connie Dwayne guy on J. Abha. Connie Dwayne guy on us. Fine. So question six is saying. Without using a calculator, simplify the following expression to a single trigonometric term. This is again a question that needs you to use our famous board mass, but you need to be crafty, very crafty indeed. So let's see, 6.1, we have sine of 10 degrees over, oh, cos of 440 degrees plus 10 of 360 degrees minus theta times sine of 2 theta okay so we just keep working here again remember the three-step approach
All right. So what is the first thing to do here? Do we have any common factors? No. But do we have any brackets off? So first is board mass. Second is factorize. Third is identities. Okay, so always think about that. So do we have any brackets to deal with? Yes, definitely this one is one of them. But is there anything else that we can think of in terms of brackets? Definitely this guy demands that we reduce them. So reduction formula here, but we can just show how we're going to do it. So we can start by saying, okay, sine 10 degrees. We don't want to temper with that for now. But this is cos of 440 is 360 plus what? Plus 80. So this is 360 degrees plus 80 degrees. So don't always stress yourself by trying to make this look like that immediately. But you know you're going to have to do something like that. CTR plus now 360 minus theta is in the fourth quadrant 10 is negative so you can say minus 10 theta that is again reduction formula we're still dealing with brackets here times now sine 2 theta is what well if you think about it do we really want to waste time now no, we don't. But for us to deal with this, because we can see the angle is single, so we obviously need to change it. Because if we did have some two thetas elsewhere, we probably want to maintain it. So this one takes us to step three, which is identities. So sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta. Okay, we're using double angle identities here. All right. We're solving. We are solving. So sine theta is the same. Okay, let's just leave it. Sine 10 degrees over. We reduce this. Now, any time you say 360 plus, you always assume that is the first quadrant you're going into. Even if it goes past the first quadrant, it's fine. So this one in the first quadrant is going to be cos of 80 degrees. Uh, plus, okay, here is going to be minus. Now, 10 of theta. Can we do anything about 10 of theta? Yes. The 10 identity, step 3 says, we have here sine of theta over cos theta. Why am I doing it now? Because I know there's something to do with this one. So, we're multiplying with 2 sine theta cos theta. All right, so... Once you've done what you've done, look again. Can I use my board mass? Are there any brackets to deal with? Not really. Are there any factors to think about? Nah, I can't factorize as yet. Any identities? Ah, oh, sorry, man. What did I say? Brackets? Yeah. No brackets. Multiplication and division? Yes, there is multiplication here. And in fact, there are factors that I can cancel. Cos and cos when they appear like that. It's sharp sharp. It is sharp sharp. So we're almost taking the six marks. So let's think about it. Is there any relationship between these two? Because I mean, this seems to be the issue right now. Is there anything we can do about it? Definitely yes. Why? Because we can see that these angles together, when you consider them, they make up 90 degrees. So they means these are correlated. So you can either change the numerator or the denominator. It's up to you, really. But all I know is uh, I can change that because I've already changed this one. So maybe it's fair to deal with that guy and make it look like this. I know that sine of 10 degrees is the same as cos of 90 degrees. You use co-functions. 90 degrees minus 10. Uh, minus 80. Ish. Uh, which is the same as cos of 80 degrees over here minus 2 now sine times sine is going to be sine squared theta alright so we're almost there so what is the story here now now 
all we can simply do no man I should not say sign but I should not say cause but sign oh gosh yeah I'm counting to now sign sign first you can't use a core function before you finish your work now we know that uh, sine 90 minus 80 is the same as cos because sine is positive in the first quadrant. It's the same as cos of 80 degrees over cos of 80 degrees minus 2 sine squared theta. Now this is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And what is that? That is cos 2 theta from the double angle identities right so you've sorted it it was a bit longish because we're trying to show every step i don't know how you guys cope with those small spaces they provide you to write on but anyway let's not politicize anything so you can see here this three step approach always works because if you analyze what we did here we had to use reduction formula to deal with that for 40 to reduce it and then here we just applied directly reduction formula here we had to use identities but you can see here you keep looking what you can do in that three step approach as we went on and on you could see that things were folding out nicely so i found this to be the best way to survive these questions during my metric yeah and i really was squashing this type of questions I knew here I'm taking the marks no matter how many they are because they're not really difficult but you need to be very 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 well experienced with this that means practicing as many as you have available to you okay so that is fine that is fine um, I don't want to take too long um, how many marks were you getting here? Again, I think expressing that and actually solving that and that is three marks already. I don't know, man. Yo, eh, just six carb of weight and then of course this one is a mark. Uh, and changing this one is a mark for sure. Uh, what else what else but i think using the tan theta here was also mark worthy so i think this is where the six marks come from all right not a big deal so let's go on to 6.2 just finish this trigonometry nice and easy nice and easy so it says now uh, given sine of 60 plus 2x plus sine of 60 minus 2x calculate the value of k if sine whatever equals that so you have yet another identity to deal with okay let's see what we have here in 6 point um, uh, 2.1 we have here sine of 60 degrees plus 2x plus sine of 60 degrees minus 2x equals k cos 2x. Okay, so we want the value of k. So it's three marks. So it means it's not going to be complicated. But here you don't have a choice. Uh, it's a tricky equation. If we use our three-step approach, um, we don't have equal angles. Sine 60 minus 2x is not the same as 60 plus 2x. So here we definitely cannot do this, and we certainly cannot factorize, but... <coughs> so we can use identities straight up. This is a double angle, ident I mean compound angle identity. So this is going to be sine 60 degrees times cos 2x, right? For sine, the sine doesn't change, but you just switch the angles for cos and sine. So this is going to be cos 60 degrees times sine 2x. Okay, 
It's gonna be just long and tiring for just three marks. Crazy, ne? <clears throat> Unless I am not understanding something. Yeah, man. Maybe I'm not understanding something. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes there's a tendency for me to waste my time. Let me not do it. Let's not go this route, okay? Okay, let's just go it. Let's let's just go at it, and then I'll show you. I think I'm seeing something that I should have done here. <clears throat> so this is going to be this situation over here. It's going to be sine 60 degrees times cos 2x. The sine, remember, never changes, so it's going to be minus cos 60 degrees. Uh, sine to x okay get feel about it equals k cos 2x okay not a problem uh, so what do you see here there is sine 60 cos 2x there is sine 60 cos 2x so you have two of them so all you have here is 2 sine 60 degrees times cos 2x, okay? We are solving this situation here. There's a plus between the two, but you can see here cos 60 sine 2x, cos 60 sine 2x, there's a negative between them. So they are like terms. You're cutting them out. So you see board mass is working here already. So all you have is what is k? cos 2x okay cos 2x is common so you divide by cos 2x this one goes and that one goes therefore k equals 2 sine 60 degrees which is going to be 2 into what is sine of 60 it's root 3 over 2 right yeah bo. from special angles so this is cool This is cool. So it involved a bit of work, the way I did it. Um, all right, sorry, this cuts this one, hey, when I agree, we are, I'm too excited. So you have root three as the answer, okay? All right, not a problem. So I think these expansions, you get a mark for taking it down to this guy here. Uh, I think it's fine and then to that guy you get your three marks all right um, not a problem so I was thinking instead of what I did here what could be the way to solve this so we have here sine 60 degrees minus uh, plus 2x okay plus sine of 60 degrees minus 2x equals k cos 2x okay what I was thinking here what I would do is to maintain my sine of 60 degrees plus 2x and then say plus sine introduce take out a common factor which is a negative uh, doch it wouldn't work ne because it makes my 60 negative so no 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 it does not work okay forget it it just wasn't going to work so maybe the expansion was the way to go so it's fine sometimes when you're thinking on the fly <laughs> you're not gonna always think of the right things ne? but if you found that it just simplifies your work just do it just do it. So again, if you inspect what we did here, we had brackets to deal with. So step one, brackets off, we did the expansions, okay? From our expansions, what did we use as the key? It was the identities. We couldn't do anything else. And then once we did that, we're able to go back and deal with like terms. And then, they all took us down to just this. Okay. 
okay this one first and from there we went back to step one we always go back to step one than other steps before then we saw that ah there was dm there we had factors so we cancelled out and then it took us there from here we could see that special echoes were our only absolution and we sorted it out nice and easy three marks thank you bye bye <laughs> okay not bye bye yet we can't say goodbye yet uh, i don't know guys time is just against me and i don't know what is going on because you yeah, tomorrow today already but I mean, it's like what? 0240 in the morning. Yeah, I'm losing my mind with this thing. I love it so much that I don't sleep. Okay, 6.2.2. It says if cos x equals square root of t, without using a calculator, determine the value of this expression here in terms of t. Okay, so again, another situation here, so 6.2.2. .2. So we are told cos x equals the square root of t, and we have to express everything in terms of t. So what do we have to do? So we are given here 10 of 60 degrees multiplied into sine of 60 degrees plus 2x plus sine of 60 degrees ah uh, when soon pale soon pale 2x even hey i feel it on us now when sarah learn the match when is it doesn't kill you up all right so let's deal with this thing this is equal to yeah what did we find what did we find? By the way, we know that this expression, I mean, these people, they like to mess with your head a bit, but they know you're going to sweat. But remember, when you don't consider this side, what did we find as a result of this expansion? We found that this is going to be 2 sine 60 cos 2x. That's what we're going to have. So we're going to have to steal this answer from here. From above, we're going to have to steal this answer before we did the cancellation. So these things are connected. So sometimes look into that because they like to introduce something new, but you can still do your expansions if you want. So what is 10 of 60? 10 of 60 is what? I complicated, as guessing I seated. The opposite is one. The adjacent is square root three, so it's one over root three. So ten of sixty. It's one over root three, which is I mean sorry, it's what? No man. Wait a minute. The adjacent to sixty is root three. So yes. It is root 3. It's just root 3. Let's see. Where is our special angle diagrams? Let's just do it here before I say lies. Uh, if I have 30 degrees and then 60 degrees over there, I know opposite to 30 is 1. This is 2. This is root 3. Adjacent to 30 is root 3. So now, 10 is opposite of adjacent, therefore it's root 3 over 1, yeah. It's root 3, can you see that? Yeah, it's root 3 over 1. So this is just a root 3 into, now we know that from above, we got 2 sine 60 degrees times cos 2x. That's all we got. Um, you don't want to stress yourself by too many things. You can just say C, C, um, 6.2.1. So sometimes you need to learn to integrate things to simplify your life. Uh, this is a root 3 into 
what is sine of 60? It's 2 times. So it's going to be what? Sine of 60 is root 3. It's opposite of hypotenuse. It's root 3 over 2. So this is 2 root 3 over 2. Ne? Ah, times cos 2x. Okay, great. Now root 3 times root 3 is just 3. 3 times 2 is 6 cos 2x over uh, actually this one is out so there's no over anything so this is 6 cos 2x so let's think about cos uh, 2x in terms of the identities we don't want anything else because we only know cos so we need to represent this in terms of cos from our identity so this is 6 into what is cos 2x is actually 2 cos squared x minus 1 we have to choose that one, double angle identity. Now, this is essentially saying we have a 6 into... Now, what is that? So, it's going to be 2 into cos squared x. But now, what is cos x? Is root t. So, it's going to be root t squared here, minus 1. Yay! I abandoned our reasons and three marks what about fetum seven zonga. I understand the young Galento. Yo, and I call a cova qua six up <laughs> because now once we take this one out already, <clears throat> so this tells us that we just have root three times root three, which is just going to be three. Yeah, see, I keep, see, I keep our foot. Now my common collected self is messing up a lot more than I was expecting. So we have 3 into, now let's deal with this. Root t squared is just t, so this is 2t minus 1, which is going to be 6t minus um, 3. I think that is the answer here. Let's just check because I think I made a few errors now. So we knew that from above, this would be 2 sine 60 cos 2x, ne? so we're happy. But you can expand, you will get here. And then sine 60 is root 3 over 2. Then with that 2, this cancels out. So we only have root 3 sine, sorry, root 3 cos 2x. Then we multiply that, it gives us 3 cos 2x, and then we used uh, double angle identities but because we're looking for cos we're not gonna include sine here so we chose the cos one then now we know cos x is essentially root t so we just square that and we multiply that by the two okay this two is coming from here yes by the two there and yeah yeah and then but it remarks about score I must see So you get a mark for that. I mean you didn't it was not given directly. And um I don't know but way to yeah I call neighbor up called ne roban gag. If I can so for this one and that one, huh? I don't even care about where those marks are. All I know is we are done with this one. That 12 marks was a bit naughty, okay, towards the end, but it wasn't too bad, I hope. Um, all right, guys, so hey, this thing is becoming longer. Let's move, guys. Hey, we don't have time. We really do not have time. Let's finish this trick, though so that we can focus on other things. All right, so question seven says, in the diagram below, the graphs of f of x equals half cos x. Now remember what happened to the amplitude? The amplitude is halved, okay? Normally the amplitude is one. Now it's half, okay? 
not a problem otherwise the angle is the same so the period is 360 g of x equals sine of x minus 30 once you see this subtracted from the angle that is a horizontal shift amplitude is one which is what we want the angle itself is not doubled or anything so period is still sorry 360 degrees but it is shifted 30 degrees to the right when it is negative there so we just expect what we would see maybe earlier we'll see it a bit later 30 degrees later so I drawn on the interval okay fine that is just the domain a and b of our intercepts of okay so there we can see a and b okay not a problem what do they want it says now determine the length of a b ah doch this is crazy so in any case um, this is just half this is just um, okay this one is a bit different let's just do some proper work here let's just do some proper work so we want a b which is a vertical line so it's fine uh, question 7 so we have 7.1 of course what we've got here is f of x equals a half of cos x and g of x equals sine of x minus 30 degrees not a problem now 7.1 we know that fine a is the y-intercept of f okay so we know that uh, a is going to be such that we have here half cos of zero degrees which is going to be equal to uh, half into cos of zero is one right no yes yeah, cos of zero is one, Yebo, which is just going to be a half, okay, not a problem. And then we know that B is also such that we have here sine. I'm just showing you this thing, so you can just go ahead and put the values there. They won't punish you. So of zero degrees minus 30 degrees, which is the same as just sine of minus 30 degrees. This is just going to be minus sine 30 degrees, negative angle stuff. So sine of 30 is a half, isn't it? So when it's negative, it's just going to be minus a half. All right. Therefore, it tells us that AB is going to be uh, y at A minus y at B which is just what we have over there so uh, this is a half minus minus a half which is just one unit I was just prolonging it so that you can see where this is coming from otherwise you can just simply take this easily and walk away with your two marks so the correct substitution and the answer is the max so I mean I'm just being myself showing everything so that you don't get lost otherwise when you understand you can just move next one it says write down the range of three times that function of f of x then you're adding a two so what does this 3 do? It actually increases our amplitude. That's what its function is for. And then this one says we are adding to the whole function, so this means the vertical shift. Okay. Now, what was the original amplitude? It was a half. So the next amplitude now is going to be multiplied by 3. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you is how I approach this question is in this manner 7.2 
I just say max okay this is the max the original max or minimum max and minimum okay max and minimum now the maximum here is going to be 3 multiplied by the original amplitude which was half okay that is the maximum your color ne? The, the minimum is going to be the same number multiplied by the negative version of what was there so that's how I do this because I don't want to stress myself the rest is just gonna be easy to handle because I know maximums and minimums is basically the amplitude so if I'm multiplying 3 into the function it just multiplies the amplitudes ne? but now there was a vertical shift so we're just going to add a 2 here to each situation alright so what do we end up with here and what do we end up with here so this is 3 over 2 plus 2 what is that so uh, let's just write it 3 into a half plus 2 I get 7 over 2 and then what do I get here 3 into minus a half plus 2 I get a half here so you can tell now that the new minimum and maximum is going to be 7 over 2 and a half so basically this therefore concludes that my range of 3 into f of x okay Ah, uh, three into f of x plus two is such that y ah uh, is is equal to is equal to. A set of y is <laughs> equal to y such that y uh, a set of y values such that y uh, mm, yeah ne ah uh, fit cut elements I'm really tired the errors I'm making see and mangas range of f so 3 times f of x plus 2 is such that y is an element let's just do the interval notation now remember these are included so it's an element of a half going to 7 over 2 let's just leave it like that okay but you can do, uh, let's just do it, y is less than or equal to 7 over 2, greater than or equal to a half. Because this thing has been shifted while the, the thingy was multiplied. So that is what is the range there. So I think the trick here is getting those values. Of course, how I do it, I use the amplitude and the vertical shifts to assist me to work out what I need to do you can use other methods if you find them useful that is the two marks alright hey perfect naughty and great deal and as this cut is happy like a sword I think lean deal alright uh, it says now read off from the graphs a value of x for which g of x minus f of x is equal to root 3 over 2 so that means my graph of G must be above the graph of F for this to happen where is that G from this point on up until this point where they are equal G 
in between appears above. Now I need to look for the situation where this is the case. All right. So again, if you look here, it's very difficult to tell. I mean, think about it. It's 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 rough. But what I would look at as a key, I want to think of f of x as zero. Where f of x is zero, then I would simply just use this function for whatever angle is that. So now the key here is that at 90 degrees, I know for a fact that f is zero. Then let's find out what would be g of x. Is it not going to be the same value as what we are looking for? So think about it. g of x is x minus 30. So we know that 90 minus 30 is 60. And we know that sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. Oh, Lord, it's easy. Very easy. So do you see? It's like that. So in this area right here. So sometimes look at the graph very well. When they say read off the graph, it means they know you need to look in the graph to find what you are looking for. So in any case, you can tell that uh, if I'm looking at the graph, I can't use these values because this is going to be definitely bigger. So you want either this situation where this is zero and then this is something. Maybe it will work or that. So either 210 or 90. Let's just check the 210 and see if it doesn't do the same thing. 210 minus 30. Oh, no, 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 no. Remember, this is 0 already, so we don't want to worry about this one. So this is going to be 0 minus into. Here we have a half uh, cos of 210 degrees all right so this one is root 3 over 4 so it's not exactly root 3 over 2 so what the root 3 over 2 so this one is not so the answer is here okay so when they say read off it means just use your graph so learn to use these graphs don't feel afraid to look into this graph sometimes you won't see it immediately so we know here that x must be equal to 90 degrees simple get your two marks and you smile 7.4 so let's just do let's just do it says now for which values of x in the interval minus 90 so that is the domain and 240 will f of x multiplied by g of x be greater than zero uh, this is like algebra indeed so when will f of x multiplied by g of x be a positive value well the reality is they have to either be both positive or both negative when they are both positive they will both appear above the x-axis right and guess what? Between 90 and 30, they appear above the x-axis. So between these two intervals right here, okay? Between those two intervals, both graphs are positive. But elsewhere, they are not. Because one is negative, the other one is positive. So unfortunately, this is out and that is out because the product here is negative. But wait a minute, from 210, so always look wider than, you know, wide. So, but you can see that, ah, Lord, from 210 to 240, what is the story right there? The story is that they are both negative and that also satisfies the constraint so that means this is the region we are looking for and this is the region we are looking for so let's start so you can just say here f of x times g of x greater than zero at where 
can say x less than 90 degrees you cannot include those areas because one is zero one is positive so it must just be greater than zero not equal to zero so greater than 30 degrees that's the first one second set of this situation uh, you can say and you can say and or or it's up to you uh, x must be less than 240 degrees but greater than 210 degrees okay so that is it so usually this is two marks but now you have two marks for each uh, carrying just one mark so two marks okay not a problem uh, I hope that was not too bad you can see it so it's a nice question so you just look and look and look and look and find all right so what is the story oh that was um, 7.4.1 now I'm really fried I think I am in the frying pan I tiredness is playing tricks on me now there's this situation right here oh lord what is that just two marks okay maybe it's not a big deal but these kinds of questions I think these are the kinds of questions that need you to really 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 have your eyes wide opened if they are not wide opened you are going to be a walking dead individual all right let's have a look and see what is going on in here so they're saying g prime of x minus five yo yo greater than zero oh no 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 g prime is basically the gradient of g okay let's have a look at this maybe that explains the two marks here so the gradient you know gradient of a curve the first derivative of any function that has a curve will give you the gradient at a point right but now this one is telling us that our graph of g I like so what this simply means is that well we're looking at the gradient of the graph of g that is positive but what is happening to g we have shifted it five degrees to the right it's already shifted so we're going to shift it a further five degrees so let's have a look by the way when is this gradient positive now we need to find these points where are the x values for the maximums we want the maxima the maxima so let's have a look i think 120 is here for g let's just check here 120 minus 30 gives us 90 yes we know that sine of 90 is 1 so there's a maximum here so some things you just need is it trigonometry when it comes to graphs you don't want to complicate them they are always simple so here you'll have the effect of 90 degrees because it goes right to 1 so you know that ah uh, you have your maximum there and you know that at the maximum you've got a stationary point so it's not really telling you anything about the gradient there the gradient is usually zero okay it's not usual but it is zero all right let's look at this again it looks like it's at minus 60 let's see minus 60 minus 30 is 90 yes so sign of minus 90 is minus 1 so we know that ah uh, this thing is here so here it goes straight to minus 1 ne? not a problem so we know that fine ideally this gradient is positive between these two areas but now we're going to shift this 5 degrees to the right 
and we're going to shift that one also five degrees to the right so what is that so we just simply are going to say here 120 degrees plus five degrees right that's all you're going to do get 125 so that means this craft is just going to be shifted into this position here if we assume that this distance is five degrees i mean so that is what we're going to end up with so we're shifting our thing here to here of course we're shifting our maximum to come here and then we are also shifting that maximum to come over there five degrees so we know that we said this is 125 then 60 minus 5 is 50 is minus 55 so this is minus 55 degrees all right so obviously this answer is trying to say look for the gradient that is positive but provided your graph has been shifted 5 degrees to the right so that is between those two areas because I mean the gradient is still positive alright so to answer this one x must be less than you cannot include it because it is 0 at 125 greater than Fifth minus 55 degrees okay so for this format you usually get two marks normally so that is where our 10 marks come from from the graph I mean the graph interpretation is usually the easiest mm, no need to panic there no need to mess up but just get it right the other way you can answer this question I'm just thinking because at first I thought of that before it don't that when you get the first derivative always think gradient the other thing I was thinking here which I felt two marks is not gonna be good for it all I know is that if I have sine of an angle let's say just g of x equals that okay all I know is that g prime of x is going to be cos x okay these are some of the things you need to know so this means that g of x being equal to sine of what x minus 30 degrees it would imply that my g prime of x is going to be cos of x minus 30 degrees so the angle doesn't change there okay and then you can start drawing this graph and you will see that when you draw the graph of this it will exactly do oh no 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 wait a minute wait a minute so once you have this you are not done remember they said five degrees they shifted so you know that you are shifting this now five degrees to the right so this implies that g of x minus 5 degrees is going to be cos of x minus 35 degrees. All right. Now draw the graph of this thing. You know how to work it out. Right. You just think of cos graph. For example, if you draw this thing, you would see something like this you know this is gonna be say you see the critical points are at 0 the origin 90 180 and 360 this is uh, 90 180 and 360 but of course you focus on that domain so this minus 90 is the end of your trouble and what else is here 270 okay maybe let's leave this side for a while so you know you have one you have minus one okay now I'm just gonna go s summarize this thing just to prove that this thing is correct now let's have a look at this one you know that whatever was going to happen at 90 is going to happen 35 degrees later so you're going to say 90 
plus 35. Guess what? It takes it to 125. So you know that if this is 90, you will assume this is your 125. Of course, if you were asked to draw this graph, you'd have to use a scale. But I'm going to do an I mean, arbitrary thing. So that means here, I'm going to be at maximum. Now, what happens? Whatever is going to happen at zero is going to happen 5, 35 degrees later, right? So here, you know exactly that uh, dog. at zero I was supposed to get one ne? but now you're gonna get a cos cos of a negative is positive isn't it so cos of 35 is what is 0, 0,89 which is just 0, 0,9 so you'll just say here is 0, 0,9 somewhere there not a problem it cuts the x-axis there and then at 90 remember what was going to happen at 90 is going to happen five, at 35 degrees earlier so you're going to say here minus 90 plus 35 right uh what am i saying here no man minus 90 minus 35 what is that huh uh, 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 oh, it's going to happen much, much later. So, don't make a mistake of adding here. So, just say minus ninety plus this time around. So it's gonna be minus ninety plus thirty-five, which is going to be minus fifty-five. So we're going to assume this is probably where we are. Minus fifty-five degrees. So at minus 55 degrees, what is going to happen? Uh, this was supposed to cut, right? It was supposed to cut the x-axis. No, I'm lying. It was supposed to be yet another maximum. So this one is going to be a minus 1 here. It's going to be a minus 1 right there. Yeah, boy. I really don't care where it cuts, let's just forget it. But here's the thing, from here it goes that way. So this graph would be like doing whatever it's doing. Spare that, it's it's inaccurate. And then of course it would do something elsewhere, but you know that all you're targeting is that positive gradient. It's positive all the way until there. I mean, that just gives you an idea, I hope I am not singing. A very silly song, but if you did a nice diagram, you would see that definitely at these two points, minus 55 and 125, in between them, the gradient is positive of this function. Maybe someday I will teach you how to do the first derivative for the trig ratios. But for now, let's just stick to the fact that we know what it is and we know what it would do. But there's a very quick way of looking at it think of the gradient and think of the function being shifted and that works all right yo i i i i i i i i pale in here i don't even know how much time we have lost in this thing all right now let's do this one let's do this one let's do this one and seal this trigonometry was it difficult at all but I think it takes a bit of time all right question 8 says um, figure shows a ramp leading to the entrance of a building B C D lie on the same horizontal plane all right once they shade you know that's the same plane okay uh, the perpendicular height uh, AC okay there uh, of the ramp is 0 0.5 meters it's indicated and the angle of elevation so that means from the horizontal, it's going up to A is 15 degrees, and we can see that. Now the entrance of the building AE, that is the one, is 0, 0,915 meters wide, so it's indicated. All right, so now here's the thing. From what we said in the past, is that whenever you are given a triangular structure 
where you know at least one angle and at least a side it's usually the triangle to start working with to get to any question that you may be asked here so that yellow triangle is our reference triangle because as much as we know the side we don't know the angles on this side so maybe we need a bit more all right so now the entrance okay it's fine now they're giving us the second one that ah look the top view this is 120 and that is 75 right there so that is extra information and they're telling us that this is an isosceles triangle so this side equals that side okay uh, from b to f of course not a problem now let's see calculate a b so a b is the hypotenuse side of that yellow triangle so they're giving us a nice run here hey guys i'm feeling dizzy now question eight so eight point one we're not gonna beat about the bush so that is sine right so sine 15 degrees equals ac which is the opposite side right opposite is always facing the angle opposite over hypotenuse which is always opposite the right angle so it's going to be over a b right therefore a b if you cross multiply they equate this one to one and you cross multiply and you solve a b as your subject of the formula is going to be equal to a c over sine of 15 degrees which is going to be 0 comma 5 divide by sine of 15 degrees then you solve so we have here 0 comma 5 divide by sine of 15 all right so we're good so what i get is that which you just need to round off to at most two decimal places so this is going to be one comma nine three units is it units or meters meters okay I'm a bit tired really but I'm enjoying the maths I hope you guys were also able to follow smoothly I know sometimes I tend to divert and say a lot of things at once a thing that can be confusing which I hope to drop as I continue to work more and more into this so what is this here this is 15 Yo, yeah. okay so how many marks are you getting two marks I do think here yeah, correct substitution really and the answer with the units drop the units you're dropping marks I'm sure 8.2 it says now figure 2 shows the top view of the ramp the area of the top of the ramp is divided into three triangles as shown in the diagram okay we are told now BAE BAE which is this angle here is 120 degrees um, and the length calculate the length of BE okay so once we are given this angle we know this side we just calculated it from here it's the same a b and we know that side we want the opposite side to that angle so that is cosine rule so the cosine rule will save us there so we know for a fact that b e is going to be equal to a b squared plus a e squared minus 2 a b times a e times cos of b a e okay of course this is the cosine rule so remember triangle rules are what you need of course this is squared all right so in essence this is saying uh, 
Therefore, we know that BE is going to be equal to the square root of all of that. Uh, let's see. What is AB? What did we find? We found 1,93 squared plus AE. This is 0, 0,915 squared minus 2 into 1,93 into 0, 0,915 yani times cos of 120 degrees okay great so this is just that ugly thing so we're not going to spend too much time there so I'm just going to try and work this out before I take the square root okay I always find it easy to start with this side because it's quite nonsensical if you don't so I'm going to start by saying cos of 120 equals negative a half all right so negative a half multiplied by that negative a half already gives me my minus a negative I mean multiply by negative 2 already gives me what a1 ne? so this and that 2 already gives me 1 so that means all I have is just this to multiply together okay so let's see what am I doing now Eesh, I'm wasting time now times minus 2 okay it's 1 times 1 comma 9 3 times 0 comma 9 1 5 and then you add these ones plus 0 comma 9 1 5 0 comma 9 1 5 squared plus mm, 1 comma 9 3 squared so I get this number as a whole I just hope it's correct I really don't have time to check it now sorry Kia Kupa Kikupa Ah, uh, but when we do more, I want a little now. It's a major to two decimal places. This is five two units. As long as you have the approach, remember, the purpose of this video is not necessarily those exact answers, but it's just how to approach these questions, so that you can capitalize on as many marks as you can. So if it is wrong shouldn't be too bad but please let me know if you pick up that there was something wrong so that I make sure this is right because I need to practice what I preach and it also needs to be right so that you too can make sure it is exactly right so I think here spotting that you need the cosine rule and doing the substitution and the answer hopefully it is correct so 8.3 what do they want from you and I now they are telling us that calculate the area of B F D sorry okay B F D now this is the guy we have to work with okay if B F D they are giving us the angle and BF equals FD, of course, an isosceles triangle, but they're telling us that BF equals 5 over 7 of BE, which we just calculated above. So this is fine, because if we can just use this to find BF, we just use our area rule. So this is the simplest question ever. So let's just find BF. So we know that BF is equal to seven or ah to five over seven BE. This is given. Okay, let's say in triangle BFD. 
my statements need to be in order now okay which is going to be 5 over 7 times what we got 2,52 let us see what is that uh, 5 over 7 times 2,52 it gives me 9 over 5 okay which is 1,8 it's fine uh, so now that we know that BF equals FD all we need to know is that therefore area of triangle B F T equals half right the product of the two sides which is the equal sides it's going to be B F multiplied by F T multiplied by sine of the included angle in those sides which is B F D so that is the area rule which is half BF is that 9 over 5 into 9 over 5 because they are equal times sine of uh, 75 degrees. So let's do this one. Let's do this one. Sine of 75 gives me that times 9 over 5 times 9 over 5 all right times 0 comma 5 so I get 1 comma five six square units uh, remember these are meters not square units but meters squared okay mistake I and as was to in a map put our prevail so meter squared so this is meters over there and yay don't write units, meters, it's meters, it's meters, it's meters. All right, um, not a big deal. So getting that guy is crucial, substituting into the formula and the answer, three marks. And that is the easy eight marks of this question. So these are some of the questions you would probably want to start with because they don't really demand. Once you see they don't demand so much from you take them down first before those analytical geometry questions go make you dizzy all right guys uh, we're going to cut this one here and then next up is going to be euclidean geometry i think i'll do it in the day or later tonight so it's a bit very early in the morning now i need to go and get some sleep i hope you guys enjoyed the video and you found it to be exactly what you need and of course I'll keep on doing my best to improve to make sure it is indeed what you need so that it can help to simplify your life in mathematics and physical science so I'm still going to look for that physical science paper I hope I find it where I found <laughs> this ones I mean these ones the mathematics ones so but if you have it, don't hesitate to email it to me and I would appreciate so that we can start looking into what might those answers be in that paper so that at least you have a bit of a courage in case you realize that, ah, I think I was robbed, you can go ahead and make a campaign and of course you have to look at those memos first and then you compare with what we are going to be doing because no one is a genius okay not 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 necessarily a genius no one is god we won't know what other people are thinking so <laughs> we can only predict what they're thinking by using these you know 
common ways of solving things, understanding of theory and applications. So, but I can tell you, we are more likely to be right than wrong because our approaches are what save us from any unnecessary problems. It can only take errors on our part to get it wrong. But the approach will almost always be correct. All right, guys, uh, enough of talking. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching and for your patience to put up with all my talking and my mistakes today. I think the tightness really got to me, but it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, as long as we're able to spot some of these mistakes and correct them, I hope there isn't so many that I did not notice. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you like the video, you can give it a thumbs up and you can share it with your friends so that they can at least have a look and see what was done just recently because I have a very strong feeling some of the questions you're going to face in that uh, media exam for those who are still to write are going to have a lot of this. Even that trial paper might have some of these things so you don't want to miss out on what is recent over and above what is a distant past thing but don't forget your past it always drives you to your future because they always look in the past and see ah we asked this question then they can just design a question just like that so always be on the lookout for things that are a bit far in the past and then maybe some in the middle as a transition and these ones that are in the immediate past or the recent past. So I can tell you, if you look at something as old as 2015, 16, 17, 18 or so, and then you look at stuff that was probably 1920, but there you will see they will be similar. So if you got a 19 and 20, maybe 21, what year is this? It's 22, yeah, 21. Uh, you will find maybe similarities there too, but you need this year's ones. You need some older ones because these are the interfaces. They know they can catch you there because they must have introduced something newish. And if you're not aware, it's going to catch you. Those that are in the middle, they know you've worked through them most of the time because they were the talk of the day when they came. So. They won't really try to mess with you there. And you know what? Interesting enough, I found myself to be more like a witch doctor, you know. I, I seem to know how to foretell the future, especially one that affects <laughs> my marks, you know. Uh, just to share a small story. Uh, during our 2005 metric year, you know, there was that studied master from Cambridge University Press or something. The red one. You know, I got a hold of that book in 2009. No, 2004. And then I practiced through that book a lot of things and it made my life a bit easier with this subject. And then I was sitting at home one time doing some current electricity question there. A very tough one really because it complexed, you know, the magnetic field, forces and movement together with current electricity. So it was nicely designed. So when I thought about that question, I was like, man, this is a question that might come in the finals. I just started to write it up because I didn't want to take my study and master to school because there were thieves there. There were guys who just steal the books and go and sell them to the other school for whatever they were smoking. Now I knew I'm not taking that book to school because I cannot afford to lose it. And guess what? In that final exam, they brought a question just like that, not necessarily that particular one, but something very closely related to it. And it was about how many marks? I think it was 12 marks or 15 marks or so. I walked away with that, and but I tried to get those books for my friends, borrowed them around and gave them, there were four of them. I gave them that book because I told them, please use this book. And they were like, wow, we saw that question, but yeah, it was difficult. Anyway, what I'm trying to say, guys, please, whatever you lay your eyes on, 
whatever becomes available to you. Make sure you grab it and you walk with it. Don't take anything for granted you come across. Ask yourself, why do I come across this? And why does it have to be in my way? Then it means there's something for you to learn from it. Ne? So please make sure anything you come across, any video, be it from as many people as there are on this platform who post, come across that particular video, make sure you walk away with an understanding from that video. If you don't have one, please try to. Either take your books, compare and contrast, go to a teacher, go to a friend, you can ask me, you can ask those who are presenting the topic that probably may have confused you. But make sure when you come across something, make sure you understand it. You will see. You will see. Those distinctions are just going to be a piece of cake. All right, guys. Bye-bye. And thank you again for your attention. And I will see you on the next one when we are doing the last part, which is Euclidean geometry. My favorite. So I'll try there to be as compact as possible. Bye-bye.